hello my cousin and welcome back to another video so um in today's video i don't want to waste time talking too much i hope all of you are good and um this video is going to be episode two of our five part legend myth fact or fiction series i know i've been gone for quite a while since i did part one uh but i've been a bit tied up and um i'm here to do um the part two which was mbuya nehanda also i do apologize for any background noise that you might hear because they are busy uh renovating and reconstructing and there's just a whole lot happening so there's a whole bunch of men that are communicating with each other and they're making noise and like the machines and everything so i do apologize if the noise bothers you all but hopefully it's not too um excessive anyway so let's get right into the video today like i said we're going to be talking about mbuya nehanda or nehanda nyakaskana who was believed to have been the greatest spirit medium or spirit guide um in zimbabwean history ever so who was mbuya nehanda so Mbuya Nehanda was born Charwe Nyakasikana. Um, contrary to popular belief, Mbuya Nehanda is actually not her name. Nehanda is not part of her um, ancestral lineage, so to say. My name is Precious Mapfumo. I'm from the Mapfumo line of people. Um, she wasn't from the Nehanda people. Nehanda is actually a term given to people that possess a royal um spirit medium so mbuya nehanda was born charwe nyakasikana um nehanda is not part of her name contrary to popular belief nehanda is actually a term or a name given to a mondoro or a royal spirit medium in zimbabwe and it is a spirit medium that is believed to only possess females and 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 give them that power so the first known person to ever um, actually possess the nehanda spirit was the daughter of the first leader of the monomutapa empire netsimba mtota so mbuya nehanda now we have established was a shikiro or a spirit medium um of the zezuru shona people um she was a hera of the watamfakosi dynasty um people in zimbabwe so she is actually quite significant uh, in zimbabwe if you're zimbabwean you grew up knowing or hearing about mbuya nehanda but most of us didn't really know what she was about <laughs> so i'm here to educate you mbuya nehanda is uh publicly uh or most prolifically known for her stand against the british south africa company of colonization that was led by cecil john rhodes in 1889 okay so just a bit of a rewind a backstory before we actually dive into the story of the um, uh, um actual mbuya nehanda that we'll be talking about the original mbuya nehanda like i've previously mentioned was called nyamita she was the daughter of the first monomutapa leader right so obviously because the monomutapa leader was a king um or a leader uh he would have had multiple wives so he had um, a daughter Nyamita with um, his other wife and he had a son who became the next Mutope or the next leader of the Munumutapa Empire after he passed on who was called Mutope, right? So when Mutope um, took over power, he believed that for his powers to be increased, for him to actually rule this land properly, he had to sleep with his half-sister Nyamita, which would actually increase his powers and have him rule over the whole of the Munumutapa. Actually, I don't know if it was their belief or what it was, but it they slept together and this act of incest was made you know it, they believed that it gave them power so after this whole incest thing had happened apparently the spirit of nehanda possessed nyamita who is believed to be the first and the original mbuya nehanda interesting so now um i don't know if this is what it means but then 
are they trying to tell us that incest has power you know incest gives you wealth you know I, I don't get that part but anyway after that whole thing happened um more than 500 years on from um the death of nyameta the spirit of nehanda possessed charwe nyakasikana in mazoe who is the mbuya nehanda that we're going to be talking about today so back then um before colonization before um uh, a lot of the african uh, countries adopted western culture things like mediums and sangomas and ngangas and things like that were pretty normal in our day-to-day -day living so the fact that nehanda was actually a shikiro or a spirit medium meant that people respected her and they respected her even more because they say that when the spirit of nehanda actually possessed her she would actually speak in the voice of the original um um buya nehanda nyamita who would now give her instructions that were coming from musikavanu or musiki which is god as we know him today so charwenya kasikana was born to a father called chitaura who was the youngest son of a man called Shaya Chimwe. Shaya Chimwe is believed to have been the founder and the leader of the Wata dynasty, which makes perfect sense why the Nehanda medium would actually possess Chirwa since it was a royal spirit medium. So it is also believed that the Nehanda spirit actually possessed Chirwa. Um, for her to become known as Mbuya Nehanda is in 1884, which would have been 44 years after she had been born. So she was 44 when she became um, a media or a shikiro, or when the spirit of Nehanda actually possessed her, proclaiming her to be now called Nehanda Chirwa Nyakasikana. She was actually pretty um instrumental to the first chimurenga that happened in 1867 to 1868 um even before the colonizers or the western or uh, british people or white people actually colonized zimbabwe um a lot of people actually held her at such high regard because she was believed to carry a spirit that uh, brought fertility to the soils um they believed that she was actually able to pray for rain she was actually able to pray for good harvests and people were harvesting uh their crops in bounty and the rains were always coming on time because the uh, medium that she carried was feta um so like i previously mentioned mbuya nehanda was very instrumental to the first known chimurenga it actually happened in 1896 not 1867 like i had mentioned um so it was 1896 to 1897 so the story goes when um the when Cecil John Rhodes and um his people came through um they came in good spirits they came in peace um you know obviously we all know the story of King Lobengula those of you who don't know that story and you'd like me to actually do another video on that please do let me know in the comment section down below and I will definitely do that so according to the historians um or the known records that are actually available it is believed that mbuya nehanda actually lived in the times of king lobengula and king lobengula actually held her at high regard so we all know the story of king lobengula and how he sold zimbabwe or matebele land um to the colonizers because of sugar and a mirror <laughs> and all of those things that people say apparently it was because of the words that mbuya nehanda had actually spoken so they say that when the spirit of nehanda actually possessed her she encouraged her people to welcome the white settlers into their environments because she said they came in good faith and they were there to build relations and that musavachka which means do not be afraid of them they are only here to you know to work together with us it is also said that she even instructed for people to take a whole black cow to them as a sign that they were accepting them into their communities and they should feel free 
So fast forward a few years after Cecil John Rhodes realizes that damn Zimbabwe is so rich, you know, and me and my people can become super rich. Let's colonize this country. That's when they started using um, cheap labor for their settlements and all the things they were building. They started using the locals and they were not paying them well. They were not treating them well, which angered a whole lot of people in that time. And also because of the direction of the Shikiro of Mbuyane Handa, she incited, you know, um, um, people to rise against this thing like no we cannot be taking this standing down we should fight so when the chimurenga a war actually happened it took these people by surprise because they were not expecting for people they thought were cowardly to actually do something about them ill-treating them you know so when that whole thing happened it shocked them um but um you know they tried they really tried but obviously these are westerners they've got guns and we only have our spears and it, we can only do so much you know but that was the beginning of a revelation of revolution or the beginning of a chain of events that led all the way up to the 1980 independence of Rhodesia now known as Zimbabwe so obviously the westerners gathered together they're like hey listen <laughs> the people that we thought were cowardly are not they're actually quite brave and if we allow them to continue doing this then more wars are coming and whatever we came here to do to colonize this land we won't be able to do because these people are too excited and and we need to cut it we need to cut it cut it we need to cut it before it goes any further so what they did was they they targeted all the spirit mediums in that time apparently there was another spirit medium that was a high priest in the first Chimurenga war and he actually dwelled upon the hills of the matopos he was the first person they had to take out so word says they actually hired an assassinator and they assassinated the man an assassin it's an assassin Ooh, so cool, guys an assassin they hired an assassin and they um they they shot the man and he died so next on the list was Mbuyane Handa Mbuyane Handa they had to get by all means and um Third on the list was Kaguvi. Okay, now let me let me let me now you know let me tell you the story of Kaguvi or Sekuru Kaguvi. Sekuru Kaguvi obviously was not married to Buyane Handa, but a lot of people seem to believe that they were. But no, guys, I did my research, and these two people were not married. However, Sekuru Kaguvi was also a medium. Of the Ndebele people. It is believed that his name Kaguvi means Kakuvi and he was born Kakuvi Nube of the Matebeleland people. So we know that Sekuru Kaguvi was Ndebele, he was not Shona. Um, so what then happened is when the the the, the settlers or the colonizers came to Zimbabwe it is believed that uh, people started harvesting less um, obviously now these colonizers were using people for cheap labor um, the land became dull and painful and um, the fertility of the soil disappeared I don't know if it because they were now over plowing the lands because they had the equipment or if it because now you know obviously they would bring in chemicals and you know the local people were used to doing things the natural way and this was actually affecting their crop but when this happened it is believed that the medium of Sekuru Kaguri started telling people that all of this was happening because of Vasinamadi. Vasinamadi uh, directly translates to those that don't have knees and that would be the white people you know so he started um, um, inciting like the the anger in people that no man we need to take all of these people out of our country out of our land and obviously she needed the help of the most powerful medium at that time which was Mbuyane Hand. This is now where the story gets interesting. It gets interesting because it is believed that 
Mbuya Nihanda spirit not Mbuya Nihanda because if I say Mbuya Nihanda it means I'm talking about Chira but the Nihanda medium the spirit the actual medium the original one it is believed that it was a spiritual wife to the Kagubi medium which means in the spirit realms the spirits of Nihanda and Kagubi were husband and wife which is why it didn't take much for Sekuru Kagubi now to actually convince Mbuya Nihanda to partner for him to preach to the people that they needed to fight against Vasina Mavi. Obviously it worked and Mbuya Nihanda gladly preached to the people which led to the 19 um to the 1896-1897 first ever recorded Shimurenga because Mbuya Nihanda apparently prophesied that um, the spirits Omari had said that they would conquer them and their bullets would turn to water and they should actually go with their arrows and the spears and fight these people. Now I don't know if the first Shimurenga went our way i don't know if the people won or if the british people won but you know just logic says the british people won because they still went ahead to colonize zimbabwe in its entirety you know so after that whole thing now these people are like no man if we let this uh, thing go on we're gonna have another war and this time trust me the whole country is gonna be out for our necks and we won't win it the only thing we can do now is to now kill Mbuya Nehanda but now they couldn't just hire an assassin like they had done with the other high priest they needed a strategy a proper plan to take out this woman because even before they had came into this land she was a highly highly respected figure and just assassinating her would actually entice more you know violence in the people they decided you know what let's actually take her to court yes let's take her to court and 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 have a whole trial that she actually murdered the head of the army uh, the british army of that time i don't remember his name i'm gonna put it somewhere up here so they went to trial <laughs> obviously guys this was the shortest recorded trial in the history of africa probably the world because it was so short they went there and they trialed her that she had actually murdered the general because there was a witness Mm, cliche there was someone who was there who witnessed that they had heard Mbuya Nehanda instructing for this man's head to be chopped off and this was a black man who testified against our own medium trader anyway after this whole thing happened they trialed her and obviously like I mentioned the British people Tsusu John Rhodes and them were part of a company called British South Africa company which means their head offices were headed in South Africa so literally the whole trial took like two days and then the judge at that time judged that you know Mbuyane Handa was guilty and she had to die by hanging they had to execute her but they needed to go ahead from the highest judge I think from South Africa so a letter was sent to South Africa um, you know just explaining the whole the whole trial i found a record of the letter i'm just gonna put it somewhere here so you guys can read it but basically it was saying i the queen i'm given power i'm giving power for the execution of chirwa nehanda nyakasikana on wednesday the 27th of april 1898 the letter was sent back to zimbabwe where the judge presiding um, that time received it and immediately ordered for the execution of Nehanda by hanging. So they then took um, her and while she was actually on her way to hang, that is when she said her most famous words, Mapupa Angu Achamuka, which means my bones will rise again. 
and evidently evidently it did in 1960 when the second Chimurenga happened um, of which the stance Mapupa Angu Achamuka was basically the motto of the whole second Chimurenga it fired up a lot a lot a lot of youths um, and obviously it was a long way coming um, it was almost 60 years coming uh, but you know youth went and they registered to be soldiers that's when a lot of people in Zimbabwe lost their relatives people died in foreign countries I even for one know that my uncle went to the war but he never came back um ah people just disappeared man because they would go to war and people needed to have war names so you wouldn't even be able to look for them because people were known by their war names you know so people died everywhere which kind of makes sense for me that when we have our national heroes day in zimbabwe that's when a lot of people die a lot of accidents happen a lot of blood is just lost on the roads and um i do believe that some of our heroes are actually quite mad but that's a story for another day because you know i can imagine someone going and sacrificing their life for their country and no one even bothers to look for them or uh, at least give them a decent burial or take care of their families you know these were family men these were people's children and they just they just disappeared where my mother is from actually in chiri there's this mountain that you can see when you're at her grandmother's house to this day at night you know you start hearing people singing war songs you start seeing cars in the mountain it's it's a movie guys and i would like to believe it's the restless souls of those that never made it home um but anyway so where was i i just sidetracked yeah i was saying in 1960 mapupa nguachamuka was the motto for which a lot of our soldiers actually went to war uh for the next 20 years up until they actually gained independence in 1980 so ah man puyane handa was just she was taking up space guys like um, another fun fact that I actually forgot to mention is that when the British first came to Zimbabwe there was a meeting that was held about giving them land to um, or allowing them into our land to begin with and Buyane Handa was one of the people that sat on that board and she was the only female ever to have ever held such a high profile um, you know meeting and be present and actually give in or you know chip in uh, her two cents because her word was gold you know uh, it was only until she said yes you know what we can accept this people were, were they accepted so talk about taking up space man you know and uh, it just makes sense for me how a lot of Zimbabwean women take up space and they've got resilient spirits and um in whatever regard you know um th that is why females especially in zimbabwe because i grew up seeing a lot of females sacrificing a lot for their families and doing it so graciously i can only imagine when nehanda was there speaking against those people that she knew would ultimately kill her but she still went ahead and did that and sacrificed her whole life for all of us so this was the story of Chirwa Nyakasikana, who was later known as Mbuya Nehanda or Nehanda Nyakasikana. I hope you guys enjoyed this part two of my series. Part three is gonna be Mount Nyanga. Please do engage with me, comment down below, like, share, comment, and don't forget to subscribe. We're almost at 1,000 subscribers. Can you believe it? We're just at 500 just the other day. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you so, so much to everyone who comes back, to everyone who likes, who comments, who shares, and who just engages with my content every time. I do appreciate all of you, and may God bless you all.